Well, Makabene, can he do it? The guy with the good looks, the expensive clothes, the big fat wallet, the pastry girl. He got everything that every working class kid dreamed of. He fell for kind of glamorous dolly bird types. He once boasted that he'd slept with 500 women. Well, if you like had two days only left in your life, I'd recommend that you spend them with him. He was like really excited, especially for like 20 year old girls. It's like, wow. He was a very intelligent boy. He just loved birds and partying. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Frank McAvenny came from here, a tough Glasgow housing scheme. But his spiritual home was here, Stringfellows. It was as much his club as West Ham, the team he joined in 1985. Frank scored off the field as much as on it, and page three girls were his speciality. His high-profile lifestyle, mixing soccer and sex, changed the face of British football forever. Football was now in the entertainment business. He looked like a star, he acted like a star, and I like that. He was really the centre line. Footballers, footballers, stars, stars. And stars were what the 80s craved. This was Thatcher's Britain, the age of the quick buck and instant celebrity. Pop musicians and film stars were used to this treatment. Now it was football's turn. In the forefront of soccer's newfound stardom were Frank McAvenny and his page three girlfriend, Jenny Blythe. We were sort of poor man's posh and becks, I suppose, <laughs> of the time. The tabloids welcomed the glamorous couple with open arms. This was the age of the soar away sun, fantasy football for real. Once they emerged on the scene with the sort of girls they could pull and with sometimes the sort of behaviour they exhibited, they were absolutely meat and drink for us. For the first time in football history, a player understood the power of the tabloid press. He used them as much as they used him. The tabloids helped to build his career, but eventually they destroyed it. And as football and its newfound celebrities grew richer in the 90s, Frank faced bankruptcy, charges of drug dealing, and a life without football. But this is more than just the classic rags to riches story. It's the story of football itself in the 80s. A decade when it was transformed into the world we know today. The era of Posh and Becks began with an unemployed Glasgow road digger. Alvin Martin. Oh, that's a good ball. McAvenny. Clean through. Round the goalkeeper. Frank McAvenny. 2 0. And it was uh, Frank who, you know, Frank, Frank McAvenue, Frank McCoo. So um, he really came down here with not much of a reputation. Everyone was uh, Frank who? Down come this blonde chap for pre-season training and his blonde hair was in fact ginger and we found out in the showers on his very first day that he was downstairs ginger, so he's nicknamed Lulu. And then of course we found out that his immaculate front teeth were in fact false and they were all caps and everything. So uh, I think we called him Mr. Ed or Shergar, Trigger. Fortune seemed to favour Frank. In the second game of the season, he was moved up front alongside West Ham's top scorer, Tony Cotty. You play 20 years and you always get, um, whether you're down a pub or talking to your mates, uh, who's the best player you play with? And I never hesitate, I always say Frank McAvenny. When he scored, he had that um, sheer undiluted uh, look of pleasure on his face as if it was the best thing in the world and the, the fans took to him because of that. The crowd started singing, they got, they got their chant for Frank, it was one McAvenny and it was the big E at the end of it and that was it. I liken him to Gary Lineker, you know, they'd be doing absolutely nothing all game and all of a sudden they're just a flash of genius and they got two goals and you're still walking off the pitch and him his arm around your shoulder and you're still wondering how the heck he got those goals. That was what the Australians thought too. Frank was firing on all fronts, for Scotland but also for West Ham. In the East End they thought he had a magic touch. And he stepped off the plane on the Saturday morning from Australia and came straight to QPR where West Ham were playing and played in the afternoon. We did nothing in the game, he looked absolutely cream crackered and then he pops up with a winning goal in about the 60th minute you know and of course oh he's the hero again but he just had an effect on us as well like oh Frank's back everything's gonna be alright <laughs>